Hi everybody, it's Darcy, and in this video, I'm going to share with you from start to finish the process of a solo art show, from idea creation to actually bringing those ideas to life, and also the faith that it takes to trust the creative process. <laughs> So I am a artist based out of Chattanooga. I went to school in this area and I graduated two years ago in 2021. I graduated with a fine art degree and part of my coursework to actually graduate was to have a solo show. That was my first show. The show I'm going to be talking about in this video is my second show, but I just wanted to bring up my first show because the difference between that one and my second one, it was interesting in seeing how the first one was different to prepare for than, than the second one and different to make work for. The first show is literally behind me. All these pieces you see behind me were from my first show. That show was coming up with one idea and it did take a little while to come up with that idea, but coming up with one idea and redoing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So all I needed was one good idea and just repeat. For this show that just opened a couple weeks ago, this show was not like that. I had to come up with essentially a new idea for every single piece. I had to tap into that creative inspiration for every single piece. And so it was just a different experience. It was kind of an experience in faith, in trusting the creative process. So I see this second show of mine as a growing process, a learning experience, and an overall positive one. Okay, so we begin in January. Some exciting things are in the works. I just met a friend for coffee and we, she and I haven't talked in like a year and we had a really, really good conversation. Her church owns a gallery and she's one of the curators for that gallery. And she was just asking me if I'd want to- So the year started off really, really good because all of a sudden, a friend of mine, we met for coffee. She told me she runs a gallery and uh, she was asking me if I wanted to be an artist uh, with a show this year in that gallery. Of course I did. I was really excited to have a show in this gallery. After a little bit of thought, I decided that I wanted to pursue an idea that had been in my mind for a while, and that was to collaborate with my dad, who is a poet. When the show opportunity came into my lap, I decided this would be a great way to step into that collaboration with him. So that was the concept for the show. That all came together in January, but I need to step back a little bit and go to a little bit before, this is still in January, but this is closer to the beginning of the year. The show thing happened towards the end of January. The beginning of the year, I started this art practice in a watercolor journal, and I decided that I wanted to notice things more this year. I wanted to be more intentional about being fully in the present. Like I wanted to see my surroundings and appreciate them and, and find beauty in the everyday. And so to do that, I decided to start a watercolor journal. I would go about my day trying to pay more attention to things. And then at the end of the day, I would remember one of those scenes with aesthetic composition or pretty colors that I had seen throughout the day. And I would paint that as best as I could remember in my watercolor journal. I wasn't aiming for realistic at all, but just abstract. So focusing on shapes, focusing on color, focusing on composition. Love that project, still keeping it up. I don't do it every day because I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself, but it's really, really nice. Great project. So that happened in January. Oh, and that will, that will make sense that why I'm telling you that a little bit later on. So we're just going to go in order here. Also in January, I discovered a love for Mary Oliver, who is a poet and oh my goodness, her poetry is just absolutely beautiful. She speaks about nature in pretty much all of her poetry and I just really, really connected with it. So after deciding to do the show, I did a little bit of playing around in my studio. I think it's really important to play as an artist and play around with things, not like not always going into the studio to intentionally do something because creativity doesn't often work like that. You have to be, you have to be creating and making and then the inspiration will often show up as you're doing that. So I was playing around in my studio, making some things in January, but not really settling on 
an actual direction for what this show would look like. I knew what I was doing. I knew I was doing my dad's poetry and my artwork, but that's about it. We go into February. <sighs> February was a doozy. February was a month where I was dealing with some personal mental issues, just like anxiety, feeling anxious over things, blowing things out of proportion, getting stressed, things unrelated to the art show. And because of all this like mental, mental strife that I was going through, I had lowered a lot, much lowered, much I had much lower creative energy during that time. So it kind of th felt like it threw a wrench in the whole thing. I did know that I had until June for the show to be up, but you know, creativity takes time. And I did get a little bit stressed about whether or not I have the time for creativity to formulate, but I had to focus on personal growth, caring for myself, caring for my mind. You know, sometimes doing art isn't the cure for that. Sometimes all I can do is just exercise and try to eat good food and try to get good sleep and have a good morning routine and have a, a routine with work and a lot of people really say art is great therapy and it is but sometimes it can be really difficult when you are I mean it is difficult when you're lacking creative energy so I had to take it easy on myself that month but I did still keep up my watercolor journal it was something simple that I could do during that time I had a few other paintings like I think I did one commission during that time and just some other random paintings just for fun but I didn't do any serious like brainstorming for the show but I did do a lot of growth in February I'm proud of myself for the season that February was March was significantly better I had done a lot of growth in February thinking through things and so I was definitely feeling some relief in March. Also, March is when the weather kind of started turning a little bit towards spring and I was really enjoying that. And I started making work for the show. And this is where the watercolor journal comes back into play. I realized that if I tried to sit down and think about individual pieces to make for individual poems, or if I tried to think big picture too soon, what is this show gonna look like? What's the message gonna be? Blah, 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 blah. I just felt it a little bit paralyzing and it kind of stifled my creativity a little bit. So I decided to just focus on one thing and that was making work that felt poetic. I knew my dad's poetry, you know, I read it, he posts on Facebook, I read it there, I read it in his books that he has, but I didn't like intentionally read his poetry to intentionally create work that went alongside it. All I did was focus on making poetic work and the watercolor journal really felt poetic to me. I saw that and I was like, oh, this is, this is great inspiration material for the show. So I started experimenting with making those pieces, recreating them in a larger format. I also had a little bit of encouragement in the form of a really cool animal sighting in March. I saw a white squirrel, which is super rare. So what happened was I was dog sitting this week, staying at the people's house that I was dog sitting for, and they apparently have a white squirrel that lives along their driveway. They're kind of more out in the country. And so I saw this squirrel two times and it was just so cool each time. I felt like it was a little message from God, a little encouragement. I looked up what seeing a white squirrel means and it says it's a, it's a symbol of change coming. I don't know how much weight you put on to signs. I don't know how much weight I personally put onto it, but I think it's kind of fun to lean into and and just kind of accept that. And I felt like I was going through a lot of change at this moment. I mean, like I said, I did a lot of mental growth in February. I was working on my first solo show outside of school. And I, I did feel like this year, the year upcoming was going to be one of growth and excitement. And so seeing that white squirrel felt like a little gift from God to me. It's not like directly related to the show, but it felt significant. April, April, was beautiful. Spring was fully there. I spent so much time outside, just camping out in my front yard with a blanket on the grass, painting, soaking in the beauty of nature. It was a wonderful thing to have this show to work on, to have something to create 
while the world is coming to life again. Flowers are growing and the sun is getting warmer and the birds are just singing away. It was a beautiful backdrop to create work for this show too. Like I said, I had just discovered Mary Oliver in January, and so I was reading a lot of her poetry, and spring weather was also the perfect backdrop to read Mary Oliver. Um, so I had all these inspirations just happening at the same time. I forgot to mention one book that I had picked up again this year, and I guess I picked it up in January, is called The Artist's Way. And I'm sure I'll be talking about this book on this channel later on or other people might be talking about it later on because there's several people on our team that really do love that book. It's really teaching me a lot about creativity. I'm learning that creativity is like this living thing. I'm learning to see God, love, and creativity as one and the same. God loves, and because he loves, he creates beautiful things, beautiful new things. So. This year, I was also having a new relationship with creativity, a new way to see creativity, a new way to see God, and spring was here, and I was reading beautiful poetry by Mary Oliver, and I was seeing white squirrels, and um, I was feeling myself growing as a person, and I was working on art. And I think that all was really a good combination for me. I also started on a dollhouse in April. This was something that had also appeared like the watercolor journal. It had appeared kind of before the show was even like a thought. I got interested in miniatures last year after seeing lots of TikTok videos about people creating miniature dollhouses and you see all these tiny little canvases up here. I like miniature stuff. I had been collecting dollhouses from thrift stores in order to pursue that idea of making miniatures and also one of my friends bought me a dollhouse for Christmas and so that dollhouse that she bought me came in handy for this show because I actually started deciding to work it into the show somehow. So. I started that in April. I just really felt like I was on a high during this month. It was a creative high. Everything was coming together beautifully. Towards the end of the month, I did start feeling like I was going back down a little bit. And that scared me because it's almost like when something good happens, I seem to always feel like something bad is going to happen soon. I'm like, this can't last. But I'm working out of that mindset. Um, I just needed a break at the end of April. and. That was fine and I just had to accept the little changing of emotions that just naturally happens. In May, getting closer to the show because like I said, it opened June, in June, it opened June 23. And in May, you know, we're basically a month out. Over a month if you're starting from the very beginning of May. But um, yeah, not much time. This whole time I was definitely trying to trust my future self that I would be able to get everything done in time for the show. I was trying to trust creativity, that creativity would show up for me when I needed it. I was getting a little bit stressed occasionally because when you have a show coming up in a month and you don't feel like you have a show ready or even in your mind, you don't really know how things are going to come together, it's a little bit stressful. But I just kind of focused on one thing at a time, getting my ideas done one after the other. Something that helped me in May was uh, I don't have an art studio. I use my living room, which has tons of space. It's really nice, but it doesn't really have much wall space. And I also can't really leave a mess in there. Um, so it's hard for me to visualize my show. If I had a dedicated art studio, I could hang all the pieces for my show on the wall and just see them all congregate together as I make more and more pieces, kind of get a vision for my show that way. That's a little bit more difficult to do since I don't have a studio, but what I did do was lay every piece out. I took a picture of it and I laid it all out on um, a spreadsheet. I actually used Procreate on the iPad to do that, but you could use Photoshop or Word or whatever. And seeing them all digitally laid side by side really helped me. So everything that I used for the show, even things that I wasn't sure were going to go on the show, everything that I made with the show relatively in mind, I put on this spreadsheet. That helped me kind of get a, a little bit more of a vision of how it would all turn out. I painted some new pieces in May. I experimented some more. I actually tried printing with flowers and plants and that was really fun. I just went outside on my porch, got a cutting board, a piece of paper, 
a hammer, some flowers, and I hammered them down into the paper to make some cool little prints. So that was super fun. And then we get to June, and June is a little bit of crunch time, but because I had been working throughout the year pretty consistently on things, you know, it wasn't like crazy, but I still, even up until like the very last moment, basically, within the last two weeks of the show, I really didn't know if I had a solid show. The week before my show, I wasn't sure how everything was going to come together but I continued to exercise my faith in the creative process and my faith that the creativity would flow from the source of creativity and yeah he didn't let me down. I had visited the gallery back in May so I could see it in person and I had taken pictures of it and so what I did the week before my show was also using Procreate. I put those pictures on Procreate. I then put my own pieces of art in digitally to see how they would lay out in the show and i found that i had even more work than i needed to fill the gallery and then the other thing was like wondering if i had the right like message if if things would be impactful but i went through my dad's poetry i had been periodically looking through it in the the past months so i knew the general theme that i was going after i think i forgot to mention that but i think i kind of decided that theme around like march or april i chose poems that matched that theme i had already kind of made a folder of potential poems to use then i put everything digitally in the gallery and i just was like yeah this works everything works out so well something i learned during this process and have learned before but it's really nice to keep learning is that things come to you when you need them. Creativity comes to you when you need it. Inspiration and ideas come to you when you need it, even before you need it. And when you're thinking about something, when you're thinking about a concept or an idea or a theme, you start to see that popping up in your life all over the place. I was asked to do the show in January, at the end of January, but I had inspiration that had already come to me even far before that, that I was able to readily pick up and use for the show. I had read a book the previous year that was really informative for the concept of the show. The book was called The Space Between Us. There's this one page in the book that I love so much. I love this quote and I'll put it on the screen in case you want to pause and read that page. But it talks about feeling isolated because somebody else doesn't understand what's going on in your mind. That's one of the themes that I see in my dad's poetry. Um, just themes of like isolation and loneliness or feeling like you're stuck in your brain, someone can't reach you there, th things like that. So that book I had already read and it, like I said, it really informed the theme of this show. The dollhouse I mentioned, I had been interested in dollhouses the previous year and when the show came around and I found the opportunity to use this new material to try this new way of making art. I had the dollhouses there already in my studio, was able to pull one of those and use this for the show. I used wood panels for a lot of the paintings in the show and earlier this year in January or maybe February I had visited a local art studio and within that art studio there was a woodworker who made panels and sold them for much cheaper than I could get online so he was already there just waiting for me to come to him and order the panels the watercolor journal I had started that in January before the show and it really informed a lot of the work for the show. I just think everything came together so well. Reading Ma Mary Oliver, it being spring, reading a book about creativity, I think my life had a theme for a while there as I was really tapping into creativity for the show. And I just felt like God was preparing me, informing me for this show even before I knew it was going to happen. I think it's so beautiful that God communicates with you in the best way for you. He, he communicates with people in unique ways. For me, for artists, creativity is a huge way that he does that. And I'm really, really learning to see that communication. And I think God is more real to me 
through creativity than in many other ways. Something that was also really cool is, like I said, I, I didn't make art directly responding to specific poetry that my dad made. I kind of made art separate from his poetry. I made it, I guess, parallel to his poetry. I knew the general themes. Eventually, I decided the general themes that I was going for. But for the most part, I made poetry separate. I mean, I made my art separate from his poetry. And it all still ended up working together so well. His poetry book that I got a lot of poems out of is called My Name is Beloved. Oh, what's it called? something the journey home it has the word home in the title and in my watercolor journal i had homes like houses kind of showed up a lot and i started bringing that into my work and i used the doll house as well that's another house and i eventually realized these wow these are homes and they parallel perfectly to the themes of a lot of his poetry of finding a home so uh, that was really cool and when i when i curated everything digitally on my ipad i was able to tell a whole story his poetry and my art just worked really nicely parallel with each other to tell this whole story the show runs from starting at night i have a painting of a house at night i have the dollhouse in a dark room um, his poetry, there's one that specifically talks about night, and then there's a lot of pieces that that focus more on isolation and are a bit more melancholic. And then we come to the middle of the show that spans across the back wall, and it is a picture, a series of five pictures, charcoal pieces of the sun rising. And then it gets to the next part of the show, which is focusing on how do we come out of isolation, how do we, how do we fight isolation and and loneliness and it, it becomes more hopeful and then it ends on a, a more positive note of finding home finding community and to think that right up until the last week before the show i didn't even see that there was a, a message there i knew i was painting work that followed a theme loosely but I didn't see that there was a whole story there. I really felt like I saw God provide in the creation of the show. He responded to my creative reaching. I reached out, I asked for inspiration and a message for my pieces, a meaning, and um, I was given that. I'm still learning a lot about God. I had somewhat of a spiritual existential crisis last year, kind of trying to refigure out what I believe and figure out things for myself but i'm somewhat putting my spiritual life back together in new ways and um, the most important thing i'm learning this year is how god communicates through creativity and art um, which is one of the greatest gifts he gave me and my favorite way of being that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching my process of creating and thinking through this art show, and I hope you were also inspired along the way. Stay tuned for more creative videos from me and the other wonderful people on this channel. And until then, keep living every day purposefully, embracing each moment, and being all that you are created to be.